Hi there, this is Dice Kimura, a Miami acoustic guitar teacher. And I'm doing a review today on the Lifespan Martin acoustic guitar strings. I just put them on my Martin. So by the way, these are the Lifespan Martin acoustic guitar strings. Uh, my buddy Edgar uh, gave me this pack, so shout out to Edgar, I know you're watching. Um, and I was a little taken aback because on the label it said $31.99 and, uh, and I was like, I hope you didn't spend $31.99 for this one pack, but we'll talk about price in a second. Let's first just take a look at the sound. I'm playing this on my 19, I think it's my 99, I forget if it was 99 or 97. It's a 90 something Martin HD 35, which is very big sounding, very boomy, huge bottom end for those Martin lovers. And of course, if you're playing a Martin guitar, it's logical to want to have Martin strings, okay? Um, and these strings are, they're, they're manufactured, at least the name on them says Martin. And for the longest time, I resisted buying Martins because Martins were actually made by another company called Diodario. And by the way, in case you don't know about strings, Diodario makes about 90% of the strings that are on the market. And they come in different names like Dean Markley and, um, you know, Ice Blue and all these other strings. They're actually versions of Diodario in different packages and marketing. It's very interesting to learn that, including Martin. But these are actually made by another company called uh, Evercoat or Everclear. Let me actually pull that up for you. Lifespan. They're made by Clone uh, Clear Tone. I was way off. Sorry. Clear Tone is the name of the uh, string manufacturer. So they're really good, by the way. Just to get that out of the way. <laughs> These are gauge 12 to 54, which is I like to use. And they sound uh, just the right amount of brassiness in the string, a bronzy kind of feel. But it has this smoky, shimmery high that's really nice. They sound great and I did some reading on this string and I discovered that these are actually coded strings hence the name lifespan um, and I was very surprised that these are coded because they don't sound coded and I um, am a huge uh, proponent and fan of non coded strings and I uh, absolutely hate um, coded strings like um, elixirs for instance and the reason why is because I can really feel the coating around the around the string and it really limits my tone it limits my attack and um, it's not a good string for me uh, just to set the premise here I am a full-time professional full-time guitar pro I play guitar about eight hours a day I've been playing for 30 years and I've been playing full-time for almost 15 years so um, I teach lessons full-time and I also perform full-time so um, my needs of playing guitar are going to be a little different from maybe your average beginner. So I just want to set that apart. If you're out there using elixirs and you love them, I don't mean to offend you. When are elixirs good for, uh, for you, for certain players, let's say? Uh, if you're an absolute beginner and you play guitar 10 minutes a day um, and you don't want to bother with changing strings, you can put on a set of elixirs and they'll last like six months to a year and you'll never have to worry about them. But if you play, um, play on, on the level that I do, which is professionally, um, I need the guitar to respond to what I'm, the way I'm attacking the strings. And so the reason I've been so loyal to non-coded strings up until now, like these Diodarios, 
is because I get this response that I get 100% of what I put into the string I'm getting back from the string. The reason I've always avoided coded strings is because I would feel like I would put 100% into the string and I would get like 80% back in, in an elixir. So I would feel like there's a governor on my motor, so to speak, and it would also stiffen my tone. I would lose the brilliance. I would lose the highs. I would lose sustain. And it would feel plasticky too. I don't feel like I'm connecting with the, with the actual bronze or the phosphor. I feel like I'm just playing over plastic strings. Now, that being said, these Lifespan Martins are different. Honestly, when I first put them on, I didn't even know they were coated because they just don't feel coated. <laughs> And they don't sound coded either. So I am very, very surprised at how good they sound. Um, and um, also, I'm going for a little bit thicker gauge. These are 12 to 54, and I've been using these Diodarios forever. They're 12 to 53. So the lower end is slightly bigger, which is giving me a little more bass and boominess. By the way, I, I can, that 0 0.01, actually 0 0.001 of an inch um, in the gauge, I can feel it. And yeah, it's, I, I like it. It's a 54. <laughs> So I want to go over a few things. How often should you change strings? And why should you change strings? And how often do I change strings? Um, I change strings about once a week. Um, but my strings on my acoustic, they start to die within about three days. I play on average of a, my acoustic about two hours a day, sometimes three or four, but on average about two hours a day. And uh, within about three days, they start to die. And then within about a week, I'll change them. You know, just because um, I don't, um, I, I mean, I can play them a few days even after they're kind of dying. It doesn't really bother me that much. Um, when I would perform full time, I now I teach slash perform, but when I would only perform, um, then I would often change strings every performance or every other performance if I was playing every day. Um, and why, so why, why do you need to change strings? I want to get into that topic with you. Basically, strings wear out, just like anything else uh, on the earth. Um, but what makes the strings wear out? <clears throat> well, um, dirt, grime, oil from your hands, and your sweat is the starting point. So when you play, your hand sweats. Even if you don't have sweaty hands, I don't really have sweaty hands, but oil is coming off my hand. And also when I'm playing in extreme situations, like with... The, I, I live uh, in Miami, Florida. It's very hot. If I'm doing an outdoor gig, you better believe I'm sweating. The sweat hits your strings and they start to rust and they start to corrode. The strings are made of metal, right? They're made of bronze and steel and um, they're going to start to corrode the strings and rust them. Also, the oil from your hands and that's in your sweat and the rust is attracting dirt. And the dirt gets caked in there and it turns into grime slash oil slash just caked up nasty like dead skin and it's actually pretty gross. Um, so all of that gets built up on your strings. So um, like I'm a guitar teacher and I'll grab somebody's good somebody will come in for lessons and they'll hand me this guitar, some ancient archaic guitar. Like here my grandfather gave me this guitar and I want to play it and I'll look at these strings and they're like, you know, 10 years old strings and they're completely rusted all the way through and my hand it feels like barbed wire while I'm going to play it you know and there's no way to expect that guitar to stay in tune or to be able to handle the abuse of like real playing really hard playing or to sustain nicely or to have a nice brilliant ring so why should you change your strings in your acoustic and the the, the only thing you can do on acoustic the only variable, the only control that you actually have over anything that can change on your acoustic is the strings, okay? It's not so with electric. With electric guitar, you can change the strings, but you could change the pickups. You could change your guitar cable into a fatter one. You could change your pedals. You could turn them on or off. You could change your amp. You could change your tubes. You can change your speaker. Um, you could change your miking setup. Like, it just all depend. There's so many variables in changing your sound. You could change your pickup selection. 
You know what I mean? But really, all we get for acoustic is we can change our strings and maybe we can get a new pick. That's pretty much it. So strings end up being a really big deal for the acoustic guitar, probably more than for electric. So if you're an acoustic player, by the way, and if you don't know how to change strings, um, I'll put a link at, at the bottom of this video um, where I teach you how to change strings on acoustic. And of course, you can feel free to contact me. I teach on Skype or send me an email. Um, but changing your strings is pretty important. How often should you change strings? If you're an everyday strummer, and let's say you're a beginner or intermediate, you should be probably changing them once every two months. If you're intermediate and advanced, if you're intermediate to advanced, you should probably change them about once a month. If you're advanced and for real, you could change them anywhere from once a month to once a week. At one point in my life, I was changing them every day. I would cut them off at night, wake up in the morning and put new ones on. So playing guitar cost me five bucks a day, you know, for the strings. Um, speaking of cost, I want to get into the cost. The cost was kind of a major turnoff for me uh, with this string. And I want to get into the math. I got my calculator here um, because I usually buy strings in bulk. Let me see if I can adjust the camera. I'll show you my string stash. I've usually got a couple hundred dollars worth of strings. These I just buy by the case. Here's a case of electrics. Here's, I got two cases of acoustics. Um, I got all of these acoustic strings. There's probably about $400 of strings here. Um, so I have every single gauge and every single um, type of guitar that you could that you could imagine. And um, so cost, if you're changing strings, you know, once a week, that's, you know, four times a month, that starts to become important. These are what I usually use, the Adario uh, 12s, and they corrode pretty quickly. Like I said, they'll give me about a week of hard pro playing, and within about three days, they're corroding. If I'm doing a show, within one show, those strings are, are done. I might not necessarily cut them off after one show because um, I tend to be a little more frugal. I might let them stay on there for just a few more days. Um, and you know what I find? That surprises a lot of people. A lot of people, they just cannot believe. They, just, they think you should change strings as often as, you know, they change tires on their car, which is like every other year, you know. They don't realize that strings, um, you're constantly getting wore out. These lifespan... They, well, let me go back to these strings. I bought these for a case. These are like $40 with free shipping on Amazon Prime. With 10 sets, that averages out to $4 a set. So when I got this from my buddy Edgar, my actually he's my student and my bandmate, and he gave me this, this pack of strings, and it had this number, $31.99 on there, and that looked a little copiously suspicious to me, but I didn't say anything at the time because it was a gift. But I went and I looked it up on Amazon. Actually, where is it Amazon or am I? Um, oh yeah, I'm here, okay. And I could not believe how expensive these strings are. So check this out. They actually are charging people. Um, the cheapest price I found for these strings is a two pack set for $16 plus tax, okay? which comes out to maybe eight bucks or eight and a half bucks if you include tax with free shipping uh, per pack, okay? Now, in what they're gonna say in their defense for this price is, well, this is a coded string, and so um, you won't need to change your strings as often. Um, and that's always been the defense, okay? Like for instance, um, the, the number one player for coded strings is Elixirs and Elixirs will run you like $16 or $15 a pack, but they'll say you could use an Elixir for like a month straight or two months straight and they won't start to wear, which I disagree with. Okay. Because they do wear, even if they're coded and they don't wear, I play my guitar so hard. I'll play so hard that I'll actually rip that coating right off in the strike zone and I'm not playing harder than I should I'm staying within what the instrument can resonate comfortably but I am ripping that uh, coating straight off the string if I use it for more than a, f a day or two so for me it's not worth it but if you're a beginner player and you don't play as aggressively as I do then um, 
it may be worth it to you to spend fifteen sixteen dollars on a pack of strings also if you don't know how to change your own strings then you're paying the music store like 35 bucks or sometimes even 50 bucks to change your strings for you so if you're gonna do it you might as well have coded strings so you don't have to do it to like another year or something I understand all that but I change my own strings and I do it all the time so I'm looking economically they want now the cheapest price was a two pack for 16 bucks which is eight bucks a pack which is double what I'm paying for Diodarios and then on other 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 sellers are selling like you know one pack standalone for eleven dollars and fifty four cents here's somebody that wants fifteen ninety nine for one pack and then here's somebody that actually wants eighty nine ninety five for five packs which when I did the math on my calculator it was like seventeen dollars a pack so um, it's pretty hyped and um, would I pay eight bucks a pack maybe um, but just I, I'm a very I'm a very uh, very much a purist in terms of tone so does it sound good yes it does does it sound coded no it doesn't that's in their defense <laughs> Is it worth eight dollars I don't know <laughs> you tell me may, leave me a comment uh, let me know your experience and what you think with this um, but the coating is very very thin so that apparently this company um, uh, clear tone they're called they did a really good job with that a very innovative job um, with making a very very thin coating having it have really nice shimmer to it and even with lead sound and then of course with chords It's very chimey. It's brilliant. You can hear the articulation of every string. Um, it's it's doing a great job in absorbing my strumming power and reflecting it out. I don't feel like anything is getting diffused, like I felt the very diffused with um, elixirs. But I don't feel diffused with these modern lifespans. <laughs> I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play these this pack for about a month and uh, maybe I'll come back with an annotation or a note inside the video and I'll let you know how they're holding up but my gut feeling is that I'm gonna opt for the non-coded uh, non-coded coded strings coded strings is the craze now in 2016 it's, it's been since like 2012 when they came out but um, why do I play non-coded strings? Well, because I play very aggressively and I want the full ring to ring into, to resonate into the body of the wood. I don't want anything coating my sound that stops the string from ringing. And I don't need the coating, I don't need the protection because I just simply change strings all the time. So because I'm willing to change it once a week or more than once a week, they never, they never really get decayed or, or rusty or dirty or broken down enough to actually need the change. So I just want to fill you in a little vocab, but when the string, when you're playing it, and if you hit it really hard, or you strum it really hard, you can actually break this coating that's even around the non-coating strings. There, there are just, there's a treatment on the string that makes it sound brilliant and give it its, con its continuous uh, resonance and sustain. And if you hit it really hard with a pick and you, you, over and over, there's just little breaks in that continuity of the metal and that creates an interruption in the vibration and the sustain. So you get less louder strings that don't sustain, they don't resonate, they don't shimmer, um, they don't sound beautiful, they won't articulate the chord with the nice overtones. So that's what ends up happening when those strings start to break down. That's why players that have a discerning ear 
they want to change those strings as, uh, as often as they need to or as often as they can afford. So, like I already said, affordability is a big deal to me. I like how I can get these by the case for $4 a pack. Um, and these are more expensive. So I'll see you next time. Thanks so much, and I'm out.